It's probably no secret that NASA and pretty much every other space agency or private company is concerned about what might happen if a massive asteroid were on a collision course with the Earth. In the 1990s, popular media depicted nuclear weapons as being a potential deterrent for these behemoth space rocks. But unfortunately, in the decades that have followed, studies have shown that nuclear weapons would not be sufficient in repelling a killer asteroid. So what are our hypothetical... Yes. Thank you, computer. Options for deflecting asteroids that might potentially have the Earth in their crosshairs. Let's find out. But first, be sure to do the thing and like, comment, sign up for the mailing list, and smash that subscribe button. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Get. In order to detect an asteroid that's on its way to collide with the Earth, first, we gotta find them. Fortunately, the methods for detecting hazardous near-Earth objects have improved drastically since the early days of the space program. But detection, and specifically early detection, of an asteroid is key to being able to either eliminate it or deflect it. We explain this in our video on NASA's failed impact scenario, in which scientists from multiple countries determined that six months would not be enough time to coordinate and organize a mission to the asteroid in order to prevent an impact. But if we did have enough time to act, what would a practical approach to deflecting an asteroid look like? Well, several methods have been proposed over the years, some practical and others right out of science fiction. Since the 1970s, NASA has used its resources to track nearly 95% of all hazardous asteroids, one kilometer or larger, that are suspected to pass within 48,280,320 kilometers of the Earth. And while that may make some of you feel warm and cozy with our chances right now, researchers conducting vital simulations still lack a lot of data and models. Near-Earth objects that aren't as large are much more difficult to track because they don't reflect as much sunlight. But with the data that NASA and many other organizations like the ESA have, they've endeavored to conduct advanced supercomputer simulations to determine how much of a threat some of these objects pose. We've talked about some methods in the past, one being to use a large spacecraft to orbit the asteroid and slowly tug it off course with its gravity. Another that would use high-powered lasers to vaporize material off one side of the asteroid, the idea being that the heat generated would alter the asteroid's trajectory. But what might surprise you is that NASA thinks that the best method might just be to ram something right into one at high speed. Over the past 20 years, scientists have been preparing for a potential impact scenario. However, instead of using advanced supercomputers, these researchers have been using a specially designed gun to fire projectiles at meteorites. Now that sounds like fun. Once successfully impacted by a projectile, researchers measured how sampled meteorites recoiled, and in some instances, even shattered. Such experiments have the potential to shed new light on how asteroids might behave if impacted with an object traveling at high velocity. And some scientists are even hopeful that such a method might deflect a hazardous object from impacting with the Earth. Researchers unveiled their final findings at the 84th Annual Meeting of the Meteoritical Society held in Chicago last month. The results of these tests suggest that the success of deflecting an asteroid may depend on how many times the object is impacted. Back in the 1960s, the leading idea was to launch a projectile at an asteroid that would break it up into small pieces before it entered the Earth's atmosphere. But this idea was flawed in that those pieces might still be large enough to cause massive damage to the Earth, rather than burning up in the atmosphere like scientists hoped they would. But as for actually hitting an asteroid in the blackest space, George Flynn, a physicist at State University of New York, Plattsburgh, said this in regard to this outdated way of thinking. It turns out, that's very hard. <laughs> Could have called that. Flynn and his team suggest that kinetic impact deflections of multiple smaller objects moving at high velocity would be the way to go. And it's kind of easy to see why. If it's hard to hit an asteroid with a single projectile, you would improve your chances by sending many objects. That way, even if a couple of those projectiles miss their target, you still have a chance of success. But also, you have a smaller likelihood of breaking the target asteroid up than if you just sent one large projectile at said asteroid. Kinetic impact deflection would alter the trajectory of the asteroid slightly, and hopefully it would change its orbit enough that it would miss Earth. Flynn went on to say, It may barely miss, but barely missing is enough. However, meteorite fragments are rare. Over the years, the team has purchased 32 meteorites, most of which were sold by private dealers. 
About half of the meteors the team has purchased belong to a family of asteroids known as carbonaceous chondrites, which should be familiar to you. We talked about these in two of our previous asteroid videos about Bennu and the Chicxulub asteroid. Links in the description. Recently, NASA's supercomputer simulations revealed that asteroids of this type end up in the outer region of the asteroid belt at least 10 times more often than we'd previously thought. But enough about that, let's talk about firing guns in space. Sort of. In order to determine how asteroids might behave when being hit with high-speed projectiles, the team looked to the past in the form of a facility that was previously used during the Apollo era of spaceflight. NASA's Ames Vertical Gun Range in California was originally built in the 60s and was used by scientists to study how lunar craters formed. It's capable of firing projectiles at over 6.4 kilometers per second, which puts your standard hunting rifle to shame. For reference, a hunting rifle will fire a bullet at 1.50 kilometers per second. Flynn says it's one of the few guns on the planet that can shoot things at the speeds characteristic of impacts. And seriously, who the hell wouldn't want to take this thing for a test drive? The team worked from inside the facility's firing chamber, which is about the size of an apartment walk-in closet. Each meteor piece was suspended from a nylon string before the chamber was drained of all of its atmosphere, creating a vacuum in an effort to create an environment similar to space, minus Earth's gravity. Next, tiny aluminum spheres were fired at the meteorites, with diameters ranging from 1 16th to 1 4th of an inch at varying speeds. The team documented the experiments using several sensors, which included cameras that were able to record up to 71,000 frames per second. Eat your heart out, PS5. The goal of all of this was to determine what velocities and size of impact would cause the meteorites to move versus which ones would cause them to shatter. As we mentioned before, the team suggests that we would need to use multiple impacts in order to divert an asteroid, especially if the object is rich in carbon. And all of this leads us to talk about DART. What is DART? Well, it's probably Earth's best hope of salvation from a potential killer asteroid. Let's jump in. Enter the DART mission, which stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. DART is run by NASA and the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory with help from JPL, Goddard Space Flight Center, Johnson Space Center, Glenn Research Center, and Langley Research Center. And it's going to be actively testing next year. NASA describes DART as a planetary defense-driven test of technologies for preventing an impact of Earth by a hazardous asteroid. DART will be the first demonstration of the kinetic impactor technique to change the motion of an asteroid in space Space. The DART mission is in Phase C, led by APL and managed under NASA's Solar System Exploration Program at Marshall Space Flight Center for NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, and the Science Mission Directorate's Planetary Science Division at NASA Headquarters in Washington, D.C. And DART's target next year? The binary near-Earth asteroid known as Didymos. While the larger asteroid that makes up Didymos is about 780 meters across, the secondary asteroid, or Moonlet, is about 160 meters in size, which NASA NASA says is more typical of the size of asteroids that could pose the most significant threat to Earth, and that should be no surprise to loyal SciGet viewers. In a recent video, we broke down how the potential damage of an asteroid is largely dependent on its velocity rather than size alone. When DART launches, it will deploy rollout solar arrays, or ROSA, to provide the solar power that the spacecraft will need to get to its destination. It will also demonstrate NASA's evolutionary xenon thruster, Commercial Next-C, a solar electric propulsion system. Next-C is a next-gen propulsion system developed at NASA's Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio. They're basically ion engines, which has me more than a little excited. DART's launch window begins on November 24, 2021, and will launch aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. After separation from the launch vehicle and over a year of cruise, it will intercept Didymos' moonlit by the end of September of 2022. This will be when the Didymos system is within 11 million kilometers of Earth and will present a great opportunity for ground-based observations and planetary radar systems to measure the change in momentum in the moonlit. So mark your calendars, folks, because by next year we'll have some real tangible proof whether or not Flynn and co. were right. In a future video, we'll talk about how we can maintain a planetary defense system like DART to eliminate the potential for a scenario like the simulation that NASA recently ran that resulted in a fictional asteroid decimating Europe. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and leave me a comment. And if you dig asteroid content, check out this video I just mentioned about that impact simulation that NASA ran recently. And oh, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.